Welcome to the Zoom Player DVD tutorial. To begin with, you need to switch to DVD mode. This can be done by pressing the F10 key or through the options. Right now we're already in DVD mode, but as you can see, F10 switches between media mode, as you can see, media mode, and DVD mode. As you can see, in DVD mode also have different background image. Uh, next, we need to configure Zoom Player. So we will open the Options dialog. As you can see, I'm under the Playback tree into uh, the DVD section. As you can see, there are uh, several uh, different ways to play the DVD, with the Smart way being the recommended one. Standard mode, just let uh, Windows choose its own uh, DVD components, which is not recommended. It's not very stable. Uh, manual mode lets you build your own uh, specification on how it should play. Again, this is more for testing. Smart mode is the recommended mode. Uh, first thing you can choose your which uh, component does the video decoding, and pressing the little C button uh, lets you configure the decoder. For example, if I choose uh, the scaler, you can see it has different configurations. Uh, with Windows, I believe Vista, but possibly Windows 7, you have uh, Microsoft components that's, uh, that basically come with Windows. Uh, but personally, I prefer either Descaler or FFD Show. They are much more flexible. For the audio, again, you have the Microsoft component uh, but here I prefer either uh, one of the, the three, probably the best. Uh, Zoom Player actually supports more. These are only uh, the decoders currently installed on this system. If you uncheck the hide mode, you basically see all the supported uh, components. However, uh, some of them are not installed on this system. Uh, if they are installed, you can uh, uh, just not registered. You can press the you can press the register select filter button, but uh, that's more advanced. Usually you don't need that. You can just uh, pick from this list. I would recommend the FFD uh, FFD show video decoder, and either this scaler any of the three is good. Uh, next you have the audio renderer. This is your audio device, and you can add additional audio and video uh, post-processing filters. For example, if I click them, you can choose from the list which component you want to use. And uh, you can select the DVD navigation filter. I wouldn't recommend changing this to anything but the Microsoft DVD navigator or some titles may not play. This is more for advanced users. Uh, here you can set the color space. This is the format in which the video is outputted to your uh, display adapter, your display card. Um, default, just leave everything as is. Uh, some lower end system may benefit by uh, specifying YV12, which uh, is the, basically the format in which DVD is encoded in and it uh, uses a little bit less CPU power, but some systems may not support it, so leaving it by default is usually good. If you want to try saving a few CPU cycles, you can try changing it to one of the others. Uh, on some systems, changing it to RGB32 may actually improve image quality. Uh, this is usually with older systems, but uh, using RGB, is uh, slower and will take more CPU power. Finally, you can cho choose uh, the video renderer. Um, for best quality, this really depends on your version of Windows. Uh, usually, one of the VMR 9s through MedVR will give you the best quality, um, but some like MedVR requires uh, more dis powerful display hardware. 
and the EVR is limited to Windows Vista and newer. It also works to some degree on Windows XP if you have the .NET 3 package installed, but it's not officially supported by Microsoft, so uh, I can't really recommend it too much. Um, after selecting uh, the component, you can press the, the verify button, which tells you that everything is correct currently. And finally, uh, you can press OK. Now, if you try to press play, Zoom Player will scan all the removable media looking for uh, a DVD title. But if one is not found, you won't get anything. Uh, as you can see, I already have one. It's basically just uh, an a movie for uh, an intro for a movie. Um, but I also have it ripped to the hard drive. So if I would want to open it, I can just drag the video TS IFO only this file. There's other IFO files, but this is the one that opens uh, the DVD. So if I would drag it here, it will also open the DVD. Okay, uh, this is just a trailer. Other things that may concern you is that in DVD mode, the right click menu is a little bit different. It has these DVD specific controls, which allows you to enable or disable closed captioning of subtitles. Uh, this DVD doesn't really have any. Uh, choose languages uh, or uh, commentary tracks. Uh, switch between uh, chapters or DVD titles and you have a few more controls like uh, seeking uh, to the root menu, title menu, chapter menu, etc. And you can seek to the next DVD chapters or the previous chapters and uh, you can uh, skip to the next DVD bookmarks. Uh, you can see the right click menu under um, open interface you have the bookmark editor uh, here. The bookmark editor is basically the same as the chapter editor for media mode, uh, except that it has an option to set a bookmark as auto-loading. That means that the selected auto-load bookmark would uh, load automatically once the DVD is played. That's it for the introduction to DVD mode. I hope you have found it informational and come visit us again.